Hey guys, this is Phil from Camera Pro, and today we're going to be taking our first look at the OM-1. Just before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and that way you'll stay up to date with all the latest content that we have. One of the first things that you will actually notice is they have still got the Olympus name or the logo just at the top of the camera. Even though they're going OM and they're changing away from the EM series, they've kept the Olympus on there, just on this first camera, just to let people know that they are transitioning. For future models, they're going to actually transition away from this. Okay, one of the first new updates of this camera is even though they've kept it at a 20 megapixel sensor, they've actually made it a stacked BSI, and that's a backside illuminated sensor. So now that means you're going to be able to get better light gathering capabilities, which will allow you to shoot better in low light performance, keeping less noise, as well as keeping more detail in your images. Another new feature in this OM-1 that really stands out is the autofocus system. They've got 1053 cross type phase detect autofocus points. Now this is really helpful when you're looking to do some continuous tracking, especially with wildlife and any sort of sporting photography. So the frame rates have also been increased to help go with this new autofocus. You can now get up to 120 frames a second. This is without continuous autofocus, however, if you do want to keep using continuous autofocus, stay tracking on birds or anything else that's moving quite quickly, you can still go up to 50 frames a second with the electronic shutter. Not only have they released the new camera, they've actually released a new battery with it. Batteries have always been a problem with mirrorless, and while they are still getting better, it has taken a long time. This one is actually coming up to 500, or rated at 520 frames before you run out. Now to be honest, if you're shooting at up to 120 frames a second, you're going to get a lot more than that. However, just from day to day use, you'll find it'll last easily 520 shots. I took this out, probably shot about six, 700 photos, probably out for about four or five hours, and I dropped to roughly 50 to 55% but I didn't have any issues with battery and not once was I worried that I was going to run out while I was out in the field. They've also changed the electronic viewfinder and it now has 5.76 million dots. And when using this, even while panning and tracking subjects, I didn't find any issues and it wasn't lagging too bad either. When you're looking straight at a subject, it looks perfectly clear and it's a great image. A few of the really nice features that have been brought over from the EM1 series to the OM1 are the high res which can do either 80 megapixels on a tripod, 50 megapixels handheld. And you can see an example of that here. And here's a version of it just slightly cropped in as well. And you really can see that the detail is held in. They've also brought across the live composite and the live ND. These are great if you are looking to go out in the field and not use a tripod. You can do handheld shots up to a second, or you can also use them while on a tripod if you just need to get a longer exposure. Using the live composite, if you are moving around a little bit, you will find that it is going to drag, depending on how slow your shutter is, because it's literally giving you a live feed of what it's going to be like, say, if you're shooting at 10, 20, 30 seconds. So if you're in a crowd of people and you're moving the camera around, you will see them all sway and start to just become motion blurs. And if you're doing it still on a tripod, you will start to see the water go slow if you're shooting a waterfall, for example, or you're at a beach. Um, you'll just literally see the water go slow, everything else around it, so it's really good for those instances. The OM-1 also has its dual SD card slot. Now these are great because they are both UHS-2, and you really will need this when you are doing your fast uh, sequential shooting. If you're going up to 120 frames a second, or even just 50 frames a second, that's going to be taking up and chewing up a lot of data. So make sure you do get the best cards possible, otherwise you won't be able to use the full ability of the camera. Now another strong point of the Olympus has always been their weather ceiling. This OM-1 is no different. Its weather sealing is IP53 rated, and that gives you the confidence just to take it out in any type of weather. I did get stuck under a bridge at one point while it was bucketing down rain, and I was in the middle of a bridge that was probably about 20 to 30 meters wide, and these guys really have made it another great camera. It's not only tough, but it does keep everything out. As always, the OM-1, along with the Olympus system, they've kept it very small because of the micro four thirds design. This means that you can get a 300mm here, which on a full frame camera is the equivalent of a 600mm, and it's an f4. If you were to look at a 600mm f4, you'd be looking at a lens this big and probably three times the weight. Now being able to take that out in the field and carry it handheld makes such a big difference. So to wrap up, they've changed the sensor, they've got a new processor in there, it's shooting at a crazy fast 120 frames a second. On top of this, the video has been improved, the menu interface is completely new and just the actual grip and the design of the camera itself along with the EVF there's so much to like about this camera. Anyone looking to do wildlife, sport, 
this really is a great bit of kit. I'd recommend it for you. And it's for anyone else, just take a look and see what you think. Thank you so much guys. And make sure you tune in again.